Welcome back to Education Matters. Did you correctly answer C? 15% of the degrees awarded by UNC last year were for business or marketing majors. Now, I should point out that biological sciences and health professions that were on this list of the choice were also among the top five degrees awarded. We are back with University of North Carolina President Margaret Spellings. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to, I want to uh, sort of tease off of that, uh, the, the business marketing majors. Um, uh, you and I were uh, political mm -hmm. science majors, uh, um, okay. and you know, there has been some discussion, and we hear so much about science and math and technology. Obviously, that's important, but are liberal arts majors uh, still important? Absolutely. And, and you know, these binary uh, discussions really are not very productive because, as we all know, uh, the liberal arts teach us to think and write, communicate, to understand each other and where we come from, and on and on and on. It's also often an on-ramp to graduate education, to uh, law schools and, and other uh, programs. So you bet. There's... Oh, good. Oh, we, we've done okay yeah. for ourselves uh, with, with, with our liberal arts degree. <laughs> so. Well, look, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to, to mention that. But let me ask you, uh, speaking of very various degrees, teacher preparation. This is a show about um, education. We primarily focus on K-12 education on this show. Um, and the schools uh, that uh, you oversee um, create most of our teachers in North Carolina. That's right. Good news, we saw an uptick in our schools of education enrollment. Um, what do you attribute that to? Well, I think it's a couple of things. As you said, when we opened, uh, enhanced teacher pay certainly doesn't hurt anything. And likewise, the uh, reestablishment of the Teaching Fellows Program, which will come online uh, in the early part of next year. And I think incentives for, uh, for teachers and young people to go into teaching are certainly in order. Uh, but sadly, we still need many more than, uh, than, uh, than we have uh, enrolling. Uh, this is a state with a growing population, a rural population, a diverse population, and we need to make sure that we have great teachers in every one of our school districts. And we're going to have to do things like use technology and other means to make sure those, those needs are met. What are your, um, you, you, you obviously um, talk regularly with your deans, uh, particularly in the, the schools of education. We've had a couple of your fine yeah. ones from NC State, Good. UNC Wilmington on the show. Great. What are they telling you? Um, what are they seeing? Do they, are, are, they, um, are things that are working better for them that are making it more attractive? For well, I, I think some of the things that we talked about making it attractive certainly are, are at issue, but one of the things that's a really chronic problem is that students wash out uh, fairly quickly often in teacher education. So they stay for three or four years and then say, hey, teaching's not for me. And so one of the things we can best do is make sure that our teachers are very skilled. When they get there, they can feel in command of their skill, of their practice, and of their subject so that they can be successful right. and stay. And those retention strategies really are as important as our recruitment strategies. Well, just like in business, it's easier to keep a customer. It's easier to keep, if you can exactly. keep a teacher, that's a big part of the pipeline. The pipeline is not just who's coming in. So Absolutely. Now, you're going to be, um, as the university, um, taking a little more of a foray into K-12 education directly. We, uh, we, yes. haven't, we haven't had um, someone on yet, but we want to, to talk about lab schools. Um, so, um, that's, is that something that uh, you see as a long-term strategy for the university, or how is that going to fit into um, your overall picture? The legislature has called on the university to create a number of lab schools throughout the system. We'll start a couple of them this fall. In fact, they're just beginning now with uh, a, a number to come next fall as well. And uh, the theory of action behind it is really very, very good, and that is that we need to make sure that our teacher candidates have real-time preparation uh, where they can meet those challenges immediately and really get those, that practice. Secondly, it also allows us to really, uh, you know, uh, develop our students so that we can have some future customers who are qualified uh, to be successful in higher education, those students coming out of those lab schools. And it allows us really to, to give back to our communities in, in very important ways. These are, are often uh, low-income, at-risk students, and that's where the lab schools are. So we're excited about it. Yeah, we're looking forward to learning more about it yeah. and seeing how they work. I mean, we certainly, like you said, there's, there's great need uh, for, always need for innovation and trying things new. So, exactly. Now, you mentioned about giving back to the community. Um, University of North Carolina, overall, all of the campus, it's a major economic driver. I was looking at some numbers. I think I'm actually going to mention some in my final word. But how important is this university system to the future of our state and, the, and really the health of our economy? I like to think that it's one of the state's most important assets, maybe the most important asset. I mean, if we are in a global knowledge economy, we're in the knowledge business. 
and we know that far too few of our, our citizens have uh, uh, the requisite amount of post-secondary education to be successful in the workplace, and our mission and our aim is to change that. Uh, we are an importer of talent right now that's served us well. We're a growing, vibrant, economically successful state right now, but we need to make sure that we're educating our people to very high levels. What else, um, you mentioned the, tu the tuition um, um, sort of management control. What else is the state, what else is the university looking at to make college more of a reality and accessible to more people in North Carolina? Well, we need to make sure that, that students are very efficient in how they uh, complete college. Uh, what we know from the research is that students obviously, uh, often take too long finding their way. So they're taking too many credits, obviously that, that costs them money and extra time that they don't need. So we need to make sure that we're putting, helping students get on a very direct path to a credential as quickly as possible and as affordably as possible. We also need to make uh, students aware of their financial aid uh, options uh, and, and responsibilities early on. Uh, we need to have good advising and counseling available to them, the various support services, especially for those first generation students. And yeah. we can do all of that. Are you bullish on this, uh, the North Carolina Promise, uh, the effort for, uh, what is it, Western Carolina, Elizabeth Pembroke City State, and UNC Elizabeth, Pembroke? That's right. I'm very excited about it because I think it could be a real game changer. We are a national leader in this. You know, our Constitution calls on this, uh, this state to make uh, higher education as free as practicable and $500 a semester is pretty darn close. So I'm excited to see what it's going to mean to those institutions uh, in particular, but most importantly to the students who will receive that benefit. And I commend the legislature to provide those levels of investment to make that real. So what's the most important thing that, uh, that, that the university needs from the state? Uh, support, confidence, uh, autonomy, uh, the ability for us to really uh, raise issues, policy issues, uh, and allow us to develop that human capital that we all uh, want and need to make this a great and thriving place to do business and to live and thrive. Great. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You, as, as you know, I am not impartial when it comes to the University of North Carolina. So we appreciate pleasure it. to have you on, and uh, we'll have you back on again. Go Heels. Thank you. After the break, this week's Leadership Spotlight.